Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my experience with some customer service for a uh, rather small American made company. Now, one thing that has always been kind of a big, I wouldn't say issue, but it's a very hot topic when it comes to the knife community. Um, what has the most value? Do you buy American made knives or do you buy Chinese made knives or stuff anywhere overseas, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, whether you're getting stuff from Poland or Italy or freaking Taiwan, it doesn't matter where, but what is, and I want you to put down in the comments, what are your favorite knives? I'm not talking about affordability. I'm talking about what you as the viewers, what is the largest portion of your collection? What do you pride yourself in? Now, at least with my collection, this is pretty much all the U.S. knives that I have. And as you can see, majority of them are Spider Co's. Why? Because they are the most um, easily obtainable, the most affordable, um, and they're the ones that you can upgrade the most, which is really cool. Now, the Spider Co's don't really have the aesthetic that pleases everybody. I understand that. Um, even myself starting in the, uh, in the hobby, I thought they were butt ugly. But after using them, excellent. Ergonomic and slicing masterpieces i freaking love them they're great but um you know what do you guys think what do you guys think about this whole thing so just let me know down in the comments but i wanted to share um i did purchase a rather pricey uh unit from dlt training it was a southern grind spider monkey this was the new one that's on uh, DLT trading it had like carbon fiber scales and the latest and greatest magna cut now the blade itself was incredible the finish was this just so consistent crystallized stone wash with a um a polish over it it was beautiful I love that there really isn't anything in my collection that comes close to the finish that was on that blade it was excellent absolutely um I did test it on a piece of paper and a piece of cardboard. I didn't go and, you know, absolutely obliterate the edge, but I made a couple passes on some cardboard and it felt great. It felt absolutely wonderful to use, but the uh, the ergonomics and the shape of that knife was just a hot spot. <laughs> the whole thing was just a giant hot spot. I really didn't like it. And while I don't have super crazy, rugged, beastly man hands, um, I don't have delicate little office worker fingers either. So I do a lot of, you know, yard work in my own yard and I, um, I work in a, you know, semi warehouse setting and I don't really care to use gloves. So my hands are always fucked. So, um, even still, there were a lot of things that I wasn't really too happy about that. It was just kind of like, it was that brand's thing. It was their design. For example, what I mean by that is this is a hinderer knife, right? A lot of people recognize this and if you don't. Um, welcome. This is what a hinderer knife looks like. This model is specifically the XM18 three and a half inch, talking about the actual blade length, three and a half inches. So the model is the XM18. Um, this doesn't have a giant flipper tab like the other ones do. This just has the choil so you can choke up on it and it's pretty darn good in hand. But one of the things that I'm not the biggest fan of is the 20 different types of hardware you need to actually disassemble the knife. It's terrible. It's absolute ass. I hate it, but I love every other bit of the knife so much that I deal with it and it's okay. Um, I don't really have to buy any super crazy proprietary hardware bits and pieces. Um, maybe the little spanner bit. That's But you know what? That's something you can get from a local hardware store. And you know what? If you don't want to go to your local hardware store and look it up, just go to Amazon. If you're watching this video, you probably have access to Amazon or a form of Amazon, if that makes any sense. But um, I'll be linking down the original listing for the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. Uh, so you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So they had proprietary hardware, essentially. They call it like your snake bite bit. There were just two little holes in what looked kind of like a regular, what would be a Torx bit or screw, right? A body screw. And they were all over the place. Um, you needed to buy that. It was like, what, like 13 or 15 bucks. It didn't cost much, but that was still kind of annoying. Most American-made knives, uh, their companies, they uh, recommend that you properly take care of your unit. Um, that includes sharpening, cleaning, proper disassembly, and reassembly, right? 
so it's typically encouraged sometimes you can void warranties i know spider co is a little weird about that if you start messing with uh the the detent and tuning the lock bar tension um or any frame pieces or if you start removing things like actually shaving off material that is a no-go that is absolutely avoiding warranty um i did that on one unit and i actually absolutely screwed myself over but i love the knife so much about another one and that's actually my my pm2 here um, I had some issues with some lock stick. I tried to go through their customer service and Spider Co was kind of like, well, because of our current CQ, what is it? What do they call it? CQI quality, constant quality improvement system or program that they have going on. They do not replace from what I've heard. And from my experience, they do not replace sprint runs. And I asked them, I said, Hey, this is a PM2. Can I just get the side with the actual compression lock bar? That's all I need. And they basically said in the most professional way, sucks to suck, dude. Uh, it's a sprint run. We can't do anything about it. And I'm like, but it's a PM2. The only thing that makes a sprint run is the freaking blade material. Whatever, not a big deal. I enjoy the knife so much. I bought a second one and sold off the other pieces as as a pile of scrap and somebody purchased it and they're probably using it for a project themselves which is completely okay so you know there's that so you, it, yeah it can be a little easy to void warranties and things like that but at least with their customer service with southern grinds customer service they wrote me back within 24 hours which i think is very impressive they wrote me back an email stating that that, that shouldn't happen the super crazy detent issue that i was having um shouldn't be that way it shouldn't have passed inspection and the fact that it went through two people's hands is honestly pretty embarrassing um it would have been had a little card stating the person who assembled it and then the person who inspected it eh. neither of those people did their job honestly because that really shouldn't have left the factory at all it shouldn't have made it into the box or anywhere near dlt trading to eventually be sent to me so but the thing is i understand things like this happen it's just that with how good my experience, no, no, not even good, with how excellent my experience has been with US production companies, whether they're big or small, uh, customer service is usually there and very available, which I enjoy, but I never really have to interact with that because by the time the knife gets to me, it's excellent. I never really have any major issues. So this was most likely a one-off incident, which is very unfortunate. Chances are, I probably would have actually held on to the knife if I didn't experience that, but it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Now, they did tell me that they would fix it or replace it if it was possible to fix it, um, but that was it. That was pretty much it. So I didn't write them back. I just wanted to see how long it would take them to respond to me and how they would respond to me. So I'm glad that they were kind and professional about it. Um, versus what a lot of other people and their horror stories have, um, you know, stated in comparison to, you know, my statement on their customer service. So there's that. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. What is your favorite U.S. company, your brand, or if you guys just don't like U.S. at all because it's just financially unobtainable, just not worth it to you. Uh, what do you guys find the most value in? Let me know. Let's talk. Let's chat in the comments section. With that being said, if you guys are subscribed, I most definitely appreciate all your guys' support and patience, of course. If you are not subscribed, consider subscribing because I have plenty more videos and content coming your guys' way. And with that being said, have a wonderful rest of your day.